Hello everyone, I am the Catholic Bible Geek. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to what will be our first this is a this is a weird study. It's our first study of the last battle, which is the last book of the Chronicles of Narnia. So it's our first study of the last book. Take that for what you want it to be. <laughs> but welcome everybody. Let me see. Make sure, oh yeah, okay, good. My YouTube was just being a little slow. Wanted to make sure I was live. We'll have some more people popping in now that we're live. It's weird going from Professor Geek Channel, which has so many more subscribers. Impromptu live streams over there, you know, grab a ton of folks. But, uh, you know, this channel is trying to grow and everything. is a little different, <clears throat> which is fine. I don't know where Big Al is. I dropped him the link. I hope he didn't forget about tonight. Or maybe he's having computer problems. It looks like, okay, he has seen the link. All right, so he's probably trying to come in here. Maybe he's having a computer reboot issue or something like that. But uh, I can chat with uh, with you guys for a bit. Uh, let's see. Welcome to Dev. Dev popped in. Great to see you first there. Daniel Heron. Great to talk to Daniel Heron just now over on the Professor Geek Inspiration of Heroes stream. Had a really great chat with him. So that'll be on the list and uh, be re-released as its own video. Great to see. Uh, Netter's Network. Hello, Netter's Network. And I did see Netter in the chat over there as well, but I was talking with Daniel so I didn't get the chance to, to say hi to some of the people who popped in later. But good to see you as well. Great to see Zetopia. Melissa Harris and Sons, excuse me, I tried to, to wolf down a couple bites of food there in between. Probably wasn't the greatest idea before I jump on mic live, but <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, we are going to be getting started in just a moment. I do see, I see my co-host now. Okay, so Al can't be with us tonight, but I do have a, a special co-host. All right, so um we'll, we'll, we'll get get started here in a moment but uh <clears throat> you know i can't do these by myself so before we dig in let me go ahead and introduce our special co-host for this this stream the series of streams mr puzz al welcome puzz al <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering what your uh <laughs> what your 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 donkey bray would be <laughs> That's about as good as it gets. <laughs> I, I love this. I, I'm highlighting your avatar there because you did such a great job. So Al sent me one of just him as the donkey puzzle from the book. And I said, that's great. But he wasn't happy with it. So he sent me one with just him as a lion, Aslan. And I was like, you can't be Jesus. That's not going to work. That's, <laughs> that's Al Sla Al Sla Sam. Yeah, we couldn't do that. So then he decided, which this made perfect sense. I didn't even think about it. Oh, yeah. Do puzzle in the lion skin. So that's great. You know, what's how, life, how are you? What's life without whimsy? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I, I'm, this, I, I, I'm, I'm having a bit of. I was having a bit of a browser issue. Oh, okay. So, so I had to switch a browser, which meant I had to re-enter Streamyard, which means they have to send codes and all yeah, kinds of stuff. That's why I that. was. That's why I was a bit late. So <clears throat> no problem. I told folks I figured you were having just some computer issues because I saw on, on Facebook where you'd seen the message, the link I sent you. So. Yeah, no worries. This is going to be a really interesting study tonight because, you know, as folks know, we missed last week because I had some stuff going on. I had to cancel. And it's been a busy time for me because uh, some papers are coming due as well as papers being turned into me to grade, you know, from the classes that I'm teaching. So it's a busy time for me right now. I'm right now I'm in the thick of writing a 15 page paper on the sacraments in the book of John. Um, that's 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 kind of mostly on my mind. So I did read and prepare for the book study, but it was for last week. So, and Al's a week behind here as well. So we're going to try to remember and try to try to get straight and, and talk about this, but it is a really interesting book to look at. Uh, first of all, we love the Chronicles of Narnia. You can't, you can't stop without reading the last book. It is a, a culmination. It is a good end to the series, to the universe and everything. But also, and you know, we've been looking at, oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I said, and, and I'm entering it with absolutely no clue as to what happens because yeah, yeah. all the other things you kind of have that basic idea from all the, all the, the media out there, you know, TV yeah. shows and everything, but they, I don't think they've ever done last battle. Yeah. I don't, maybe I'm sure the BBC has done some production of it at some point, maybe, but, um, but yeah, no, I don't I, think they have. I, yeah. I don't, I don't think so. I really don't know really? if they have, maybe they not. didn't. I don't know. I just assumed I that they completed the Chronicles, but, mm. but the interesting thing is, right. You know, you're writing a ch children's story series as, as Lewis was. So it's for children. 
at the same time, he knows he has a lot of adult readers and, uh, you know, adult readers who are wanting children's fiction. He also knows that he's writing with characters who are basically Jesus, you know, as Aslan is, you know, so he's, <clears throat> even though he's dealing with a different universe, we're going to see him draw a lot of, of correlations with the book of revelation. Uh, we're going to see different things um, like that as we see the, the universe of Narnia kind of go through its apocalypse. So um, it's interesting. How do you, how do you approach all that as a children's author, you know, or, or a writer who's writing a piece of children's fiction, you know, there's some pretty heady themes and he does it really well. Um, it's a novel that you can't approach thinking, I need to be cognizant of people who pick this up as their first novel. Cause that's just not intended. If anybody's picking up the last battle, the first time they're reading the Chronicles of Narnia, someone out there, please stop them. You know? So I don't think he's <laughs> thinking about that so much. Cause you can't, you don't want to give a child the last battle and say, here, see, you read this for the first time. It's like, what? No, you know, I hate this ape. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, going to be an interesting way to dig through, but, uh, I do see my dear sound engraver popped in. Good to see you. I know she's been uh, running late with work, so she wasn't able to be on the last stream, but good to see her here. I, I'm called her handsome Catholic intellectual. Oh, no, Catholic was in the name there. Ha my handsome intellectual. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <clears throat> um, also, Ginny Yu, welcome. I uh, don't think I've seen Ginny Yu around this is the first time. I was, uh, I was re watching the stream where you two, quote unquote, came out to everybody. The Thanksgiving really? stream. Yeah. <laughs> You dig that out, Mister Nostalgia. <laughs> I, I it, it was total. It was to, for the total nostalgia feels of it all. <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, also Samuel Proctor. I see Samuel Proctor dropping in. Good to see you there. All right, so let's dig in. Our first chapter. You know, you think about these books. You got characters that that we know from previous books. So, how do you start out each one? And this is interesting. We're in Narnia at this point. And we start out with uh, this. Turn your volume uh, down just a little bit, there. First of all, yeah, that that is a freaky drawing for the page one, like on the introduction. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. Oh, oh, the um, the weird bird thing. Oh yeah, that's Tash. That's Tash. Oh. oh yeah. Let okay. me uh, let me show folks what we're talking about here. That's um, yeah, that's Tash, the god of Kalorman. A bird like creature, so pretty freaky there. <clears throat> but um as we get into it, we 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 are we are hanging out with puzzle and shift. Shift is a, a ape, a chimpanzee of some sort here, and puzzle and the, the dynamic immediately you like puzzle the donkey because he's very uh naive and mm -hmm. gullible, but a great heart. And that's why he can be so uh, easily manipulated is because he's got this big heart. So you see shift, just take the, the ape, just take advantage of him left and right. You know, Oh, there's, yeah, there's something he, in the water. Go fish that out. Go ahead. <clears throat> he's Lenny from a, yeah. man. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, really uh, narcissistic and, and evil manipulation there shift on his part. you know, even before they get to anything major, they see something in the water and, uh, shift the ape tells puzzle the donkey go swim and fetch that out you're an ape you can swim a lot better than me how dare you you know that uh it hurts me or whatever you know and 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 uh fine i'll do it then and then she, that puts you the donkey to say no no please don't do it please i'll do it i'll do it that is just that is oh that is wicked evil manipulation that people do to each other you know and kids reading this probably notice their parents sometimes do it to them if you got a horrible parent you know um yeah, pretty wicked. So you automatically just dis you despise Shift the ape, and you you do have a heart for Puzzle the donkey, gullible and you know senseless as he is, he's got that great big heart. So they find though in the water a discarded lion skin, and it's uh, probably from one of the hunters upstream. It just was discarded or, or slipped out of a ship or something. They don't know what. They don't know why but it would have been a lion skin that somebody had skinned a lion, you know, a hunter skinned the lion to take with them probably from another uh, uh, country there or whatever. And shift isn't telling puzzle his plan or anything, but he wants him to try it on, try it on, wear it, wear it. And I like that puzzle uh, automatically knows I shouldn't do that. That'd be disrespectful. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's uh, even though it probably wasn't a talking lion, Aslan's my God, you know, it's basically what he, you know, he's, um, he's thinking there and I'm not going to put on 
a semblance or something like that, you know, and right. I, I really respect that about puzzle with all of his gullibility. He's, he's got that innate sense of what ought to be revered yeah, he, there, you know? Yeah. Cause the first thing he wanted to do was to, to have a funeral. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To, to pay respect. And yeah, that, that, that does tell you about it, but uh, of course that, Silly ape. <laughs> <laughs> Al messaged me when he finished reading these chapters. He goes, I hate that ape. <laughs> yeah, he gets it gets worse. But um, you know, we, we see that as, as well today with um examples of, of people wanting to um I'm trying to think of specific examples, but uh it's okay to show reverence. It's okay to, to, to keep the sacred sacred, you know? Um, but there's this, this, this mentality in the world, like, Oh, whatever. It's just, it's just joking around. It's just this and that, you know, I can have this, I can watch this, this stand up comedian or, or it bugs me to death when like a family guy's on and all of a sudden, you know, Jesus shows up in one of their sketches. I'm like, that's not okay. That's not okay. Stop pretending it is. That's that's no, there's a line and you crossed it big time. You know, it's, it's, it's good to show reverence, and but you know that's the world. The world is like shift. Ah, oh, come on, it's you know blah 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 or whatever. Um, it's just a lion's cloth. It's just a comedy sketch. It's just a, uh, whatever you know, and it bugs me to death. But uh, but puzzle doesn't have the strength to stand up to shift. That's that's his flaw, you know. Um, or he's you know not, maybe not strength to stand up to him, but strength to to not be manipulated or, or duped by it. That's probably a better way. But and one of puzzles, um psychological weapons is to turn it around when a shift did i say shifts sorry yeah shifts yeah turn around on puzzle yeah by by telling puzzle oh, you're so unkind how how could you yeah. think that how, yeah by, and like giving him like the the complex of oh my god i'm so i'm, I'm such a terrible person man mm -hmm. for thinking yeah. that that's the uh the sociopath you know narcissist definitely mm -hmm. Now, um, Shift takes the lion skin and it works in secret. He, he wants, wants to make sure no birds oversee him, but he starts to stitch and he makes a big costume, lion costume for Puzzle out of it, basically. And then we leave him. We don't know what exactly he's doing with it, but he has it, you know, Puzzle tried on and whatnot. The next, uh, so chapter two, we, we jump a little bit of time and we go to the king at this point. <clears throat> and our king, this is a, a generation far down the line from the last time we were around with Silverchair. <clears throat> and uh, King Tyrion, if I'm pronouncing it, if I got their name right? T Tyrion. Yeah. yeah, Tyrion. King Tyrion and his friend, Jewel the Unicorn. So his friend is a uh, uh, best friend or closest advisor or whatever, is a unicorn by the name of Jewel. They are uh, out and about in the in the land there, and they they start to hear reports of of is it reports of Aslan coming are being are shown in the in the distance, right? Um, what's so much for today? Exactly, what is it they they go and investigate first? It's been about a week. Um, yeah, I know. It's like it's like I, I know they got there, but I can't remember why. Yeah, exactly. Well, the centaur, <clears throat> the centaurs come and tell them. Yeah, Rune, Runewick comes to tell them some things. Um, I know that there, there's there's a shoot. I can't remember exactly what it was that drew them there, but there have been um, like hunting, hunting of even uh, of uh, talking birds, some slaying of, of some of the talking animals and whatnot. And this is near the uh, near the border out there. Uh, cutting down of trees. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. cutting down of trees, even, right, um, yeah. e even talking trees. So the other yeah, felling trees. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what draws, um, what draws them out, what draws the King out with his trusted confidant jewel. Let me check in with the chat here. Um, <clears throat> Dev says most monkeys can't swim. Chimps are especially can't. That's why they often have moats of water. Did not know that. Uh, Sound Engraver says shift is like the ideologues who lord their knowledge over people. They persuade people that they know best. Yeah. And that if you don't agree with them, you are in, you are one causing harm. Yeah. That kind of thing. That's a good point. I didn't think that connection. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, obviously the King is going to come investigate, you know, this slang yeah. of trees and whatnot, <clears throat> but, the, but there's also the rumor that, uh, that Aslan has returned mm -hmm. and it doesn't fit with any of the foretold returns yeah yeah so there's something that that something's something's up 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're investigating. <clears throat> yeah, Aslan would never order, you know, these trees, you know, the, the, right. which are his creations, you know, sentient beings, his creation is to be to be slaughtered and, and taken down. So they go out and, and uh, investigate. And what they see is a band of Kalormans. You know, we remember Kalorman, uh, you know, the, the foreign nation that was the uh, setting for Horse and His Boy. They are a pagan nation. They worship this god named Tash, uh, who's, who's pretty brutal, you know, pretty evil, evil mm-hmm. kind of religion there. Oh, and um, they, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. But before that, <laughs> the poor death of the dryad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Go ahead. And, yeah, talk about that. Yeah, just um, showing the link between between the dryad and her tree and her tree. Mm-hmm. Uh, she started, she uh, uh, got, uh, Ah, gasp the dryad, shuddering as if in pain, shuddering time after time as if under repeated blows. Then yeah. all at once she fell sideways as if suddenly, or as suddenly as if both her feet had been cut out from under her. For a second they saw her lying dead on the grass, and then she vanished. Mm-hmm. Her tree so the, miles away had been cut down. Basically. Yeah. So the tree that was, you know, she was the avatar as the dryad of this tree mm-hmm. and she had traveled to King Tyrion, but her tree miles away had been ter- uh, cut down and that's what make what kills her. Yeah. So this is going to enrage the king, obviously. And uh, no, there's no returning. Aslan would never do this. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. he knows that. So they go to investigate and they come across, uh, co- come upon a troop of Kalormans there. And the Kalormans have, uh, they're cutting down the trees and they're having this horse, you know, haul the trees. And then the horse talks back to them. And this is the moment that enrages King Tyrion all the more because this means they have they have harsh, harnessed up a talking horse. You don't do that, right? Talking beasts in Narnia are humans. That's like sla- enslavement. Um, you know, the the, the uh, non-talking beasts or whatever, sure, they can be hunted for food or, or used for things like that to be ridden and such, but not the talking beasts. And uh, so King Tyrion is seeing these foreigners coming into his land, killing sentient trees and harnessing up and enslaving talking beasts he's in a rage and he attacks these men and jewel attacks him with them you know uh and jewel is a unicorn unicorns are pretty brutal you know they got that big mm-hmm. you know spike on their forehead they can be so they take these Kalormans, man they take them down and um <clears throat> it's it's an interesting moment because it, it's it's it would be so easy for the heroes just to jump right in and, and slay but no it's it's got to be problematized and, and, and confused a little bit here by the animal saying, no, but Aslan told us to do this. And the horse itself, you know, no, Aslan, you know, told me to do this and all that kind of thing. So you've got this, um, it, it gets thick and murky and even more evil, you know, and that's what's so, yeah. so sadistic about it. When people try to not use enslavement, not just use physical warfare, but psychological, ideological warfare, yeah, using their religion against them. Mm-hmm, exactly. And we've been I mean, seeing that go for the centuries. Go ahead. For a children for a children's book, this is dark. Yeah. I mean, there's been some dark aspects in the other ones, but this is this is as dark as the Narnia books have gotten. It's it's dark because it begs the the implications it begs, right? It mm-hmm. doesn't actually show you anybody being murdered or anybody being um, you know, Oops. But well, it, the implications are there. The know? dry, well, except the dryad, you know. And yeah, yeah, the dryad, yeah, that kind of. Mur- but even that's a murder of a tree, not that avatar, right? So it's, it's a different the way you show it. You don't see the violence mm-hmm. necessarily, like blood spewing or something. So it's so it's safe for children, but it does. It's psychologically pretty dark, intense. Yeah. Um. Uh, so King Tyrion and. Jewel decide that they are actually going to turn themselves in. I'm trying to find the moment where they talk about turning themselves in. Um, let's see. Um, shoot. Where is it? Looks down. <clears throat> All right. Horse. Master horse, master horse, said Tyrion, as he hastily cut its traces. How came these aliens to enslave you? It's Narnia. Is Narnia conquered? Has there been a battle? No, sire, panted the horse. Aslan is here. It's all by his orders. He is commanded. Where danger king said Jewel Titan uh, looked up and saw the Kalormans mixed with a few talking beasts were beginning to run towards them from every direction. The two dead men had died without a cry. And so it had been a moment before the rest of the crowd knew what was happened, but now they did. So the Kalormans are starting to rally and, and, um, mm-hmm. and go upon them. Tyrion and Jewel are, are going to um, 
At first, the, the instance, the, the instinct is to flee. The king flung himself astride his old friend who turned and galloped away. He changed direction twice to her face. Uh, Whither away, sire, to care Paravel? Hold hard, friend, said Tyrion. Let me off. He slid off the unicorn's back and faced him. Jewel said the king, we have done a dreadful deed. We were sorely provoked, said Jewel. But to leap on them unawares, without defying them, while they were unarmed. Fa, we are two murderers, Jewel. I am dishonored forever. So it's interesting. There was righteous anger, right? The king mm -hmm. was protecting his people in his land, but he feels that in honor, in sense of honor, he didn't um, he didn't cry out to them first. He just fell upon them unarmed and unaware. You can argue the the uh, the, the merits of that, but also the fact that that his own subjects are thinking Aslan did this. So so his best way to fight, you know, that's the thing when when people attack you ideologically. One of the most in infuriating things about it is you can't just fight back in, in traditional ways. You can't attack them. No, ideologically, you have to really dig into yourself and, and, and fight back ideologically and, and, and hold the truth and keep mm -hmm. trying to shine the light on truth. So he, he turns himself in. Jewel turns himself in as well. They are uh, bound up and taken to, they're going to be taken to Aslan. Now, we find out what's been going on here. We find out the story and what Shift has done. Shift himself has put himself in this human-like coat. And Puzzle has made a couple appearances as Aslan, but only at night. And Puzzle will not talk to anybody. So Aslan won't speak to anybody but Shift, his, his, uh, his go-between. So mm -hmm. you basically have the Antichrist and the False Prophet here a little bit, you know, from, from Revelation. You know, it's a picture of that anyway. And it's another thing that's interesting that um, Shift the kind of things that the, the ways that shift tells people it's all from Aslan. So he basically tells them night is day and day is night and, and black mm -hmm. is white and white is black. Once you throw out that seminal truth, once you throw out, you know, the truth of who God is, you can start saying there's no such thing as, as male and female. Oh, it's just all, it's just whatever you feel like, you know, there's no such thing as that marriage is anything marriage is, you know, I can marry a telephone pole if I want to, you know, once you throw out God, our, our, our substitute a false picture of God, then truth completely crumbles. Anything can mean anything. Now, the ideologues of today love that. Yes, that's true. Nothing means nothing. Everything's socially constructed. And they just kind of, that. that's that's just insane, right? You can't live like that. Yeah. And that's the world that we see slowly crumbling around us. And, and Shift is a great picture of that. And One the fact, the, and the fact that he's wearing a paper crown, not yes. even a real crown. Yeah. A paper, a paper crown. crown. So yeah. fl very flimsy and very, I mean, I know there's something there mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for like, you know, for, as a metaphor, but yeah. Yeah. What's well, if it's not, it's not a real crown. Yeah. There's no real crown. Yeah. This His authority is, is, is paper it, thin. He, he tells people that by the way, I'm not a chimp. I'm not an ape. I'm a man. I'm just a very old man. So that's why I look mm -hmm. a little like I do. And that's something that we've seen ever since Lion, ever, actually ever since um, The Magician's Nephew, but that image of uh, people who try to be human or try to be man, but aren't really man. So like the witch, one of the things that made her so evil was she, was, she wasn't a human. She wasn't a daughter of Eve, but she, she was a giantess from um, Charn. So for her to to try to pretend that she was human, you know, that was a great evil. And the beavers tell, uh, tell Lucy, Peter, and, and the whole crew there, they tell them that... Um, beware certain creatures that look a lot like humans. You know, they tend to be the evilest. Now, there are exceptions. You know, some of the dwarves are very nice and whatnot. But, you know, the creatures who look like humans but aren't, that's where you have to be uh, wary of. And I think the picture of that here is what, what looks like the truth but isn't. That's where you really have to know know your stuff. And, you know, just drawing a lesson for from it for us spiritually, if you're a Christian and you don't know your Bible, what the heck are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be an expert, but start reading it. You need to start knowing it because the ideologues out there and they are going to show you, you know, the spirit of Antichrist is in the world at all times, you know, as the Bible tells us. And uh, it's always going to try and show you something that's like, you know, well, wouldn't this be in the spirit of Christ to do this? Never mind that the other places in the Bible explicitly preach against it, but wouldn't it be more loving to do this or that? No, you, you got to resist those little things that look like the truth, but aren't, you know, just like the things that look human, but aren't. So even shift himself trying to say, I am a man, but, but, you know, no, you're an ape, you know, you're a monkey. Mm -hmm. um, and he wants his nuts. Not oh, that's right. Yeah. The nuts from the squirrels. Yeah. yeah. 
Now yeah, take me, see, I yeah. want. I mean, Aslan wants some more nuts. <laughs> exactly. These, these you've bought me aren't anything like enough. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I just want to kick that ape in his <laughs> paper <laughs> crown. Yeah. <laughs> and you got uh, so yeah, he's enslaving the. Uh, it, it's a it's a horrible plan here now. How is he able to do it? Okay, on the one hand, he's got the false notion that Aslan is 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 back, you know. And Aslan, mm -hmm. like I said, puzzle only appears at night in the skin, and he only talks to them through through shift. But if that fails, he's also made a deal with the men of Kalorman. The Kalorman armies are there, and he's told the creatures of Narnia, Aslan wants you to go and work for the Kalormans. Go and and uh, the moles dig in their mines, and the horses pull their carts and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, as a way, so he's going to basically slave, uh, uh, sell them out as slaves, you know, for tribute or whatever. Um, so it's pretty dark, you know, it's really dark. And, and you've got, uh, it, it's hard to hear. They've got the baby, what was it a baby? Um, oh, shoot, I just lost my place. A baby rabbit or something like that, um, speaking out against it, you know, from the mouths of babes, that kind of idea. Oh, man, it was a lamb. Place. Lamb, thank you. Yeah. Just lamb of God. Hello. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Little on the nose there. See us. <laughs> um there we go okay back to it um so uh Tyrion speaks out against this nonsense aslan would never do this this and that they immediately uh silence Tyrion and, and they take him away and tie him up somewhere out of earshot so he can't see and hear what's going on it's a really uh touching moment then Tyrion is um roughly used he's tied up away but then suddenly these squirrels come up to him and these squirrels come in and um, he's their king, right? So they're mm -hmm. not going to, to not pay allegiance to their king. And they, they unbeknownst to anybody else, they don't, they bring him some water, they bring him some food and everything like that. And they try to, to mop his brow. It's a little bit of a picture of the mice, like uh, cutting the balance of, of Aslan, you know, on the stone table yeah. in the second book. And, um, but they're, they're there oh. to tend to their king, but they say, we can't, we can't let you go because this is Aslan. You know, they're completely duped. They don't know any better. Um, one other insidious thing that uh, that uh, he, he's doing is that he is saying that the god of the Kalormans, Tash, is Aslan. Yeah, Aslan yeah. is Tash. So if Tash wants something done, it's the same as Aslan. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, aren't all gods just the same, really? Yeah. I mean, don't we all just worship the same god? I mean, you can call him Jesus or Buddha or whatever Allah, but it's the same, you know, this is a lie straight from hell that, you know, we are told every other, you know, every generation it, it pops up, you know, and it's, and it's a way of getting outside. It's that lie, that lie about, well, it's just all in the spirit of love and it's all of that. Now love is great and God wants us to love, but that lie in particular is a way to remove the consequences of your actions and remove the responsibility for your actions away from yourself. Because if it's all just, you know, relevant and it's all the same that's what that lie does it's a, it's, a, it's a way to try to remove responsibility and consequences go ahead Al. you were say something uh your video was lagging a bit but it seems like it caught up to itself oh okay yeah yeah it does that occasionally yeah, now and then it's better, it's better now <clears throat> um let me check i see some company in the chat here uh that sound engraver or no, no dev dev says it strikes me <clears throat> Uh, how interesting it is the false prophet comes from a donkey, considering what the donkey means in Jesus' own story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that um, you know, uh, the, the Messiah would ride into the city of David on the uh, cult of an ass. Yep, and, uh, you know, and so, so, yeah, and, and yeah, and, um, although it never says that she rode on the uh, on the donkey in the in the nativity story, but that's the scene we get, you know, right, definitely. Um Sonny Graver says one poignant aspect of this is that talking beasts obey this false Aslan because they don't know him or are not familiar with him. Since Aslan has been away, they miss learning about him. Yeah. And plus he won't talk to them. They're following somebody who won't talk to them. The thing about them that makes them sentient, that makes them human, you know, so to speak, is that they're talking beasts. Well, then God would, then Aslan would meet you as you are and talk to you, but this Aslan's not talking to them. So that's a, that's a danger right there. It's a red flag. Yeah. They don't know him. Um, they haven't really learned about him, you know? So, so yeah, when you haven't, I think that's what you're going for. And I think that's great when you're, when you're not getting to know Aslan as he's, as he's available to you now, or Jesus, as he's available to you now, 
how can you expect to recognize him or to, to not be duped when, you know, false hymns come back, you know, and so forth. Yeah, it's a good good picture there. Um, lost my, okay. Moving on to chapter four, I think now. Is that where we are now? Don't let me uh, skip anything. This yeah, necessary. you started, started talking a little bit about it with, um, with Tyrion tied up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the uh, little squirrels and stuff coming up to him. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's one thing, though, this cat. Um, so the different animals are are, are, um, are questioning questioning different things. And um, so you know how sad you're... All right. So, uh, so bewildered. Um, there would have broken... Uh, there was only one who did not look at all unhappy. It was a ginger cat, a great big Tom in the prime of life who sat bolt upright with its tail curled around his toes in the very front of all the beasts. He had been staring straight at the ape and the Kalorman captain all the time and had never once blinked his eyes. Excuse me, said the cat very politely, but this interests me. Does your friend from Kalorman say the same? Assuredly, said the Kalorman, the, uh, talking about Tosh and Aslan being the same. Uh, assuredly, said the Kalorman, the enlightened ape, a man, I mean, is in the right. Aslan means neither less nor more than Tash. Especially Aslan means no more than Tash, suggested the cat. No more at all, said the Kalorman, looking the cat straight in the face. Is that good enough for you, Ginger, said the ape. Oh, certainly, said Ginger coolly. Thank you very much. I only wanted to be quite clear. I think I'm beginning to understand. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's really wisdom in that, too, that, um, you know, those people who say, oh, you know, um, all religions are the same or, or we should we should revere all religions and respect all religions are also the same ones who will 100 percent love to, to tear down Christianity or mock it or whatever. But don't you dare touch Islam or something like that, you know. So, um, you know, oh, particularly Aslan means no more than Tash. That's really what you're trying to say, what you're trying to get at, you know. Um, yes, yes, of course, of course. So who is this ginger? What is this ginger? Will the ginger come back? We don't know. We'll see, see, I wonder. <laughs> um, chapter four. So that night we have a scene in which the um, the uh, puzzle comes out. You know, in in the in the lion's main to, to to you know glimpse glimpse uh, for the people to get a glimpse of or the animals to get a glimpse of him. But Tyrion himself has this dream. He has this dream in which he is transported to a room of these individuals. And we know as readers that these individuals are the professor. I forget the professor's name. Um, Diggory. Diggory. Yeah. And uh, who was the um, Diggory? And what was the girl's name? Oh. Po Polly? Was it Polly? No, Polly I forget. Anyway. Penny. Something P. I forget. But um, they're they're older now. Polly. So this is, uh, Polly. It is Polly. It is Polly. Okay. So yeah, Diggory and Polly are, are old now, and um, Peter, Edmund, Lucy, and Susan are grown up, but we see all of them there, except for Susan. We don't see Susan, but we see them, Peter, uh, Edmund, Lucy there is, is grown men. So we see all of the, the humans, oh, also Eustace and, um, and Jill from the last book are there, you know, grown much older. So they're all there in this room. Uh, some of them are anyway. I forget the exact details there, but Tyrion sees them. They're trying to communicate with them. And they realize then this is actually not just a dream. It's actually a vision that they're having of Tyrion, which means to them, they know they've been to Narnia a bunch of times. Well, Obviously, yeah. they're going to be called to Narnia soon. They, they're needed. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, Friends of Narnia, uh, was it? Across yeah. the world to call you. I, Tyrion, King of Narnia, Lord of Car Caravel, and Emperor of the Lone Islands. And then he went into his uh, vision. Yeah. And that's the thing. We don't have here... Um, in, in Narnia, we don't have a Bible. We don't, Aslan didn't give him mm -hmm. a, a, you know, there's no, there's not even a church. Aslan didn't lead, set up a church or anything like that. So what does Tyrion do? Tyrion looks at history. Tyrion looks at what is, um, how has help come from Aslan before? And it's come in the, in the manner, because he knows his history, studies his history, his true history. And it came from this other world, these human beings, the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve from another world. Would, um, would you consider, uh, the the sons of adam and daughters of eve uh analogous of angels or prophets um or either, either the same to a certain extent well prophets would be more like individuals oh, yeah. from narnia or, yeah you know just like prophets but, if you're really like going the, for the but, type 
Yeah, but I was I was just wondering because it's like you know it's like he's praying he's praying to God for help and help is arriving. Yeah, and, yeah. You know. I think you you could say sort of angelic. I mean, like the you know we would be sort of the angels to them because we're not of their world, you know. But we pop in. Although there's differences too that you know, um, uh, kings and queens should always be sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. But mm -hmm. uh, so so he contacts them. They they actually uh, get this contact, and then we see that come to fruition here. In is it chapter five? Five that happens. Um, yeah, chapter five. Next moment, so at the end of chapter four, next moment he was wide awake, still tied to the tree, cold and stiffer than ever. The wood was full of pale, dreary light that comes before the sunrise. He was soaking wet with dew. It was nearly morning. The waking was about the worst moment he had ever had in his life. Um, but his misery did not last long. Almost at once, there came a bump and then a second bump. The two children were standing before him. The wood in front of him had it quite, quite empty a second before, and he knew that they had not come from behind his tree, for he would have heard them. They had, in fact, simply appeared from nowhere. He saw at a glance that they were wearing the same queer, dingy sort of clothes as the people in his dream. So it ends up being Eustace and Jill mm -hmm. popped again. And that we get a, um, I, I like the little bit of a backstory, what was going on in their minds. When they had this vision, they knew, because they were always kept in touch because they had always been ones who had a contact with uh, with Narnia. So they kept in touch and they had that bond. And then when they had this vision, they knew that they'd need, they'd be needed. And they also knew that the only ones who were told that they couldn't come back are the only ones who weren't told they couldn't come back were Eustace and Jill. So mm -hmm. uh, they're ready. They're prepared to, to come through and they were making plans and everything like that. And they, they end up popping, popping, you know, as, as they said, in a pop sound into Narnia. Um, so stop <laughs> me if you want to say anything there. I just think it's funny. It's like after, uh, we're we're in the last books so of all the characters we've met. You know, we've got this great warrior in Peter and, and Justin Edmund and Lucy, the sweet girl who's tearing yet the B team. <laughs> <laughs> the B team. <laughs> you so hey, they, oh. <laughs> I think we can give used to some credit. This is his third journey into Narnia. Yeah, true, <laughs> but still. <laughs> I, just well, think it, I think it's funny. It's like, oh, please, please help me. Boom. Hi, we're here. They're not the high kings and high queens. of Right. 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 Yeah. But there is, a, there's a theme set up, right? Because remember, um, oh man, I'm doing that thing on, I can't remember anything on stream names or whatever. Who was the dwarf in uh, Prince Caspian? Um, uh, oh, oh God. <laughs> he was the steward for Prince Ca I forget. Anyway, yeah, I but when he know. went to go find help, he went to go find the high king and queen, and he sees these children, Lucy Edmund and uh, Peter and Susan, and he said, oh, I, we wanted help. We wanted an army or at least a great warrior. You know, we have these kids, you know, so there is that theme of um, thinking that you're not getting what you're asking for. Or you wanted something visually or, you know, by worldly standards, more powerful or whatever, but it ends up being more than enough, you know, mm -hmm. so. Jill and Eustace are that they do free King Tyrion and he knows, okay, he knows what he's up against now. There's definitely a false Aslan because when he prayed to the real Aslan, you know, uh, you know, he was, he was given the help that he needed. So they go to this uh, kind of barracks that he, I think his father had set up on the uh, outskirts of Narnia, you know, out there where they are close to the boundaries and whatnot. And it's a, a, um, a, a weapons cast, you know, a weapons. Um, Trumpkin, by the way. Sound yeah, just did it too. Oh, thank you, Sound Yeah. Uh yeah. So it's a weapons cache that they go and find. Um they find and they garb themselves in Kalorman armor and whatnot because they realize that they're uh, as they'll they'll decide here, they're gonna have to go back and save Jewel first. Now that centaur that had come to them when they when they met the dryad at the beginning, when King Tyrion and Jewel met the dryad and find, found out that there were enemies slaying these trees. The, he sent the centaur to go round up an army and meet them there. So they do have a Narnian army from King Tyrion, loyal to King Tyrion, on their way. But they decide, they're going to decide, I think, I can't remember if it's the end of chapter 5 or the very beginning of chapter 6, but that they need to first go back and rescue Jewel and then go back and meet up with the army. So they need to be sort of incognito. So they, they put on Kalorman armor and they even get the Kalorman scimitars and the bows and whatnot. And we have a little bit of... um you know, honest, uh, well, Jill says, you know, I'm not, I'm not very good with a, with a bow or whatever. And Eustace says, no, yes, she is. She was here using a bow in Narnia before. And I've been teaching her or whatever since then, you know, should we ever come back? And, mm -hmm. uh, and Eustace of course was trained by Caspian himself, you know? So, um, 
so they're arming up. We've got a little bit of hope now. That's why I think it's good to end on chapter five for our first study here, mm -hmm. because it shows all of the really uncomfortable things that are going on in the book and the, the ideological attacks and the, and the misrepresentations of Aslan. It's just, uh, it just sits under your skin or sits your teeth on edge. And, um, and to at least end with a little bit of hope with, with King Tyrion being uh, rescued and they know they've got a battle to fight now, you know, so they're off and, uh, and putting on the, we'll get into this a little bit more next time, but what, what the significance is of putting on the, the uh, disguise of your enemies, but going in to fight truth. That's something mm -hmm. that uh, we'll see how they do it. And we'll talk about that next time, I think to get at it more, but uh, yeah, I like the, I like the little, uh, when they figure out how long it's been since they were last there, I was like, "So, oh, so he's oh, yeah. king, he's king, really now." I was like, "I'm the, I'm the." And he's like, "Nay, I'm the seventh in descent from him. He's been dead yeah. for two hundred years." <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And they always have to remember, "Oh, dope. That's the way it always yeah. is." You know, yeah. And a lot of that's for new readers too, or, or readers who haven't, you know, picked up one of the books in a while or something. So, yeah, um, yeah. So that's good. Anything else that I kind of skipped over, or you wanted to bring up that I didn't talk about, or you remember, or you wanted to? I'm just giving you the option. You don't have to have anything. No, no, no. Yeah, we pretty much hit all the all the high spots. Plus, I, I, I do love. It's like you know we're going like we're figuring we're going back to Narnia. So what do they bring? Hard boiled egg sandwiches, <laughs> sandwiches, and some kind of paste. <laughs> so well, like the paste. <laughs> it's interesting because you think of their last their the you know all of them all the way back to Peters and whatnot all of their journeys to Narnia they were each time they were given the weapons they needed to fight whether yeah. from Father Christmas or in the uh in the in the treasure room of Care Paravel or whatever they're always equipped with what they need by Aslan himself or Narnia itself. So they bring what is, what is the one thing they always wish they had more of food, right? They had to look yeah. apples and Prince Caspian and so forth. So. I just thought it was funny. Yeah. Like, yeah so hard boiled egg sandwiches. <laughs> Going to Narnia, pack your hard boiled eggs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's funny. Uh, so we know we're uh, there's 16 chapters in this one. I'm trying to decide if we should do six chapters next time and five the next or five the next and 16 the last. So let me um take a look at the division of pages here. It is a little bit more to do in the end. Let me see if we if we read chapter 11, though, it'd be. I think it's probably best to go ahead and read through chapter 11. For next week. Yeah, that's about equal page wise anyway, even though it's one extra chapter. We'll read through chapter 11 for next week. And then um, the last week, we'll just read the five five remaining chapters, obviously. Mm -hmm. So how does that sound? Sounds okie dokie. Good, good. <laughs> and um it's gonna be pretty sweet it's a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on in the uh in this book it gets really intense and so many great little lessons to pull from it as well um it's gonna be sad you know to say goodbye to to narnia but we're not saying goodbye like i said to the book studies or even to c.s lewis we are going to move into the uh lord of the rings next and then um with an eye toward uh, doing this, the C.S. Lewis's space trilogy after that. And, and both Lewis and Tolkien have a lot of fiction that we have yet to cover, you know, so um, we're going to come back and do a lot of these. So they're fun. So we're not going anywhere for that. I am going to, um, you know, I, I mentioned on uh, the, the inspiration to hero stream with Daniel, with Birdman earlier that I'm in the middle of writing this big paper. I don't know if I mentioned on this stream or that stream, they all kind of ran together in my mind now, <laughs> but uh I'm in the middle of writing a 15 page paper on the sacraments in the gospel of John. So I'm kind of focused uh, on that one. Cause I remember this that. one. It was this one. Okay. And I really want to, um, you know, I've been saying for a while that I want to come back and finish up the John, the gospel of John study, you know? So, um, so that is coming back. I promise. I just need to get through this week. Uh, but I also thought of some other cool, um, uh, standalone videos, our streams and then cut them out as videos. I don't know. We'll see. I actually would have done this one as a pre-show tonight had I not had the inspiration of hero stream over on professor geek to do, but I want to talk more about what it means. It kind of spurned uh, or gave me the idea from sound engraver stream last night where she referenced the stream I had done earlier. And she was talking a lot about um, art and messaging and art. And it was a great stream. If you didn't catch sound engravers uh, Monday night muse last night, definitely go back and watch it. It's really great. But uh, what it means to be a Christian, like what kind of Christian art we need? We need real art. We need truth. But too often it's just dolled up in the Christian fiction genre or the Christian music genre. 
And more often than not, that tends to be completely removing the artistic merit because you're starting with the message and not the art itself. And God doesn't call us to be propagandists. He calls us to be artists, but Christian artists. And what does that mean? I've talked about it a little bit before, but I've got some more specifics I think I'd like to talk. So I might do a sequel to that stream at some point. So uh, a Christian being an artist as opposed to an artist doing Christian art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at the very latest, I'll do that as a pre-show for next time. We'll see. But uh, but yeah, I've got more content coming to this channel. It's just been uh, it's been harrowing, but uh, but that's going to free up very soon. Mm -hmm. I don't work over the summer except for the channel, so that's that's got a free free time right there to automatically ramp up content. What's coming up from you, Al? Um, well, I um, are netters, netters this Saturday, or yes, I'll be joining um, Troy and Nanette on Netters Network this Saturday for a rewatch of the. Adams Family, the uh, the original nice. um, film with uh, Raul Julia and uh, um, the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great. that'll be a lot of fun. Angelica um, Houston, Christopher Lloyd, yep, uh, Christina and, Ricci. Yeah, and then of course the next for for my channel, the next rewatch my films with friends is going to be The Great Outdoors with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. With Birdman which, and Age of Boomer, right? With with Birdman and uh, Boomer, yeah. It's cool. uh, uh, sadly, the Birdman couldn't join me last Saturday because of technical issues, but uh, mm. we had a lot of fun watching UHF. So yeah, yeah, cool. Well, uh, yep. So that's it. We're going to call that a stream. I'm a little exhausted after two back to back streams, but um, thanks for hanging the, out with us. I dub thee a stream. <laughs> I dub thee a stream. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back next week, and we'll be back this Thursday over on Professor Geek and Birdman tomorrow, and all kinds of stuff. Um, oh, Santa Graver says, would you be able to do the Narnia rewatches at 10 PM? I think I teach until 8 PM on Tuesdays now. Yeah, that's, that's a possible possibility. Yeah. We'll, we'll make sure we have a good time. Cause I forgot that I did say we're jumping right into Lord of the Rings, but we are doing the rewatches of the three Narnia films before we do that. So like that is you, happening too. Like you wouldn't do what sound engraver asks we will make sure sound engraver can be here whether that means starting a little later or doing it on a weekend night or something i don't know i'll figure it out but we're gonna make sure sound engraver can be here so gonna gonna gonna, gonna take care of my love we'll make sure that happens mm -hmm. um Jin Yu said, I have to read these things to follow, but great to listen with you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks for popping in. Great to great to have you there. And um yeah if you, you can read along that's wonderful. Um or you can just listen to us kind of recap it too, but you get more out of it if you read. Uh, there are wonderful, I keep saying, because Al listens to them too, there are wonderful audio book versions of these if you don't have the time to sit down and read the books. You know, yeah. I, I bounce back and forth between the two and it, given my schedule. So. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. Last Battle is being read by Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. We will be back um, with more stuff, but until then, God bless. Hey,